How's it going all? Today, I want to talk to you about some of the biggest mistakes people make when trying to lead others. What not to do as a leader. Hey world, I'm Rico Nasol, a creative executive, entrepreneur, and life and leadership coach. In this video today, I want to talk about something that's really important for anyone who wants to be a leader. Like I said at the top, it's what not to do as a leader. A lot of people will tell you the things you need to do. Today I want to talk about what not to do. Believe it or not, a lot of people make these mistakes and it can cost them the respect and productivity of their teams. Um, it can also ruin relationships and affect their ability to lead. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, don't be bossy. Nobody likes a bossy leader. Nobody. I mean, unless you do, but I don't. <laughs> Have you ever been stuck with a bossy leader? Uh, like, no, really, nobody likes it. Like, I'm going to say it again, nobody likes it. Um, they're the ones that they're always telling you what to do, and then they never like your ideas, and they always tell you reasons why your ideas are bad. A good leader is someone who can take input from their team and listens more, and then they can make decisions that are best for the team. Not necessarily what's best for everyone, but it's actually what's best for the team. Being bossy doesn't win you any points. You know, it probably gives you a reputation of being bossy and being a micromanager. Um, and it just makes people not want to work with you. So if you are looking to be a leader, remember, don't be bossy. I don't even use the word boss. So like I say, manager or leader, um, I don't like being called boss. So like maybe even lose that. Get rid of boss. Get it out of your vocabulary and especially don't be bossy. Number two, don't be negative. Complaining gets you nowhere fast. Really, really fast. Uh, do you ever feel like you're stuck in a rut or like no matter how hard you try, you can't seem to get ahead? Well, there's a good reason for that and it's called complaining or you can say negativity, negative mindset. And that's every time you open your mouth, you're either saying something very negative or you're complaining um, and you're putting everybody around you in a negative mindset. Like that mentality, that vibe, it rubs off on your teams. You don't want that type of attitude to rub off on your teams. Unless you want a really like abrasive, toxic place to work in. When you complain as a leader, what you're actually doing is you're, you're telling the rest of your team that you're giving up your power to actually change and affect that situation. You're kind of like throwing your hands up and saying like, whatever it is, what it is, um, that's not a great thing for teams to see their leader do. It, it becomes a form of, of victim mentality, like it's out of your control and it's happening to you instead of you being able to impact the outcome. Um, what that does, it's going to keep you and your team from progressing and growing and being seen as effective. Um, you don't want to do that because that means your attitude then is reflective of everybody else. Not good. So if you want to lead effectively, you should inspire and motivate people. So just stop the complaining, quit it, and start taking action. Instead of like wallowing in self-pity, Focus on what you can control and how you can improve your team's performance and just their attitude. Just be positive. Positivity rubs off just as well as negativity. And when you make that decision to stay positive and inspire, amazing things will happen. Trust me, I've seen it happen time and time again. Whenever I have positive thoughts and like reinforce the team, they always do better. I try to, I can't, I don't really have a negative example because I don't like to come in negative. Um, so maybe. Maybe someone else can give you that example. <laughs> Number three, don't be selfish. Leadership is always about putting other people first. This is an important one when it, when it comes to leadership. It's the one quality that's absolutely essential, and that's the ability to be selfless. Selflessness. Selflessness. Remember, selflessness. Not selfish, but selflessness. That's because leading others is all about putting them first. I've talked about it in other videos and I'll probably talk about it in one coming up, but there's a difference between leaning from behind and leaning from the front. You gotta know when to lead from the front and lead from behind. If you're constantly focused on your own agenda 
how can you possibly be thinking about what's best for your team if you're always thinking about like what is going to make you look successful um, how do you motivate inspire others to follow you if you're not lifting them up with you true leaders know it's it's not about them it's about the team and it's about the goals and the things you're trying to build together and the things you're trying to accomplish together do everything you can to make sure your team has the space that they need to succeed just think of it this way you're there to block tackle and remove roadblocks and get their back don't throw your team under the bus that's the worst thing you can do just throw your team under the bus get their backs show that you support them show them that you're there to lift them up number four don't be inflexible change is necessary for growth change is hard it's uncomfortable uh, and it's even a little scary and so in some places it happens all the time but that doesn't mean it's not necessary change is good sometimes the only constant is change and that can be in a good way and if if organizations want to continue to be relevant and to grow and to evolve and even change with the industry and how that's evolving change is something you have to do um, why do you think Friendster went away, MySpace went away, maybe Facebook's going away too. Like, people evolve, generations evolve, you need to change and evolve with it. And that's why I like to use this phrase, you know, like, I don't like look at, looking in the rearview mirror, right? Like when you have competition and things like that, if you're looking in the rearview mirror, you're actually keeping, taking your eyes off the road ahead. So if you're focused on what's behind you, you may very well be left behind you got to be focused on paving the road ahead and what is going to keep you ahead of the game and how you're going to change to make sure you stay relevant. And as a leader, you have to be open to this change. And sometimes you have to be the one that's evoking this change. Otherwise, you might be seen as inflexible or out of touch, dinosaur, archaic, whatever, fill in your adjective here. But that also doesn't mean you make changes for the sake of making changes. You know, it has to make sense for the business and for the team. But if something isn't working, don't be afraid to shake things up if you have to. And the only thing worse than change is stagnation, staying the same. Number five, don't be indecisive. Make decisions and stand on those. There's nothing worse than a leader that can't make decisions. Um, indecision leads to stagnation, and it's the last thing anyone wants in a leader. It also gives the wrong signal to the team. They feel like their leader isn't strong enough to make a decision and stand on it stand on it. You know, it, this doesn't mean that you're not going to take other people's um, perspectives and opinions into account. But what it does mean that you're going to make a decision quickly and confidently and move then the teams into action. And if you can't move these teams into action quickly, they'll simply be frustrated by you and they won't want to follow you. So if you want to be a great leader, learn to make quick, confident decisions and stick to them. It'll save a lot of people headaches, frustration, and turmoil in the future. Number six, don't ignore your team. They are your biggest asset. And if you want to be successful in business, it's important to remember that your team is your biggest asset. It's how you're going to get things done. They're the ones that are going to be doing the work to achieve all the goals that you're trying to achieve. Ignoring them or treating them poorly is definitely a surefire way to sabotage your own success and theirs. Instead, take the time to get to know your people um, as human beings, get to know their strengths, understand their weaknesses, and then give them support and resources they need to be successful. Let them know that you're holding them up and that you're gonna be there whenever they need you. You're not gonna do it for them, don't get me wrong, like you're not gonna enable bad behavior, but you are gonna support them and give them the tools they need to be successful. And when you do that and you work together as a team, there's no limit to what you all can do together and how much success you can find. Um, an exercise you can try to like get to know people is one I have, it's called three by three, which is three personal goals, three professional goals. You share them, um, they share it with you theirs. I usually share mine also. And then we hold each other accountable and check in, you know, how's the traveling going? Also how your presenting skills going. It's just a way to get to know each other's people and, and hold each other accountable and just kind of check in from time to time. Number seven, one of the most important for me is do not forget to have some fun. Have some fun with your team. Being a leader doesn't always have to be a serious business. Trust me, I'm not serious all the time. I'm, I'm hardly ever serious, maybe. Maybe not enough. 
I don't know. Ask my team. <laughs> um, but some of the best leaders I know, they work hard, but they also they know how to have a good time. When you're able to let loose and enjoy yourself, it shows that you're you're confident, you're comfortable in your own skin, and that like that quality is appealing to people. It draws them in, like that you are confident and and you not don't take yourself too seriously. Uh, but don't get me wrong, there's definitely a line to be drawn um, between having fun and, and embarrassing yourself. Uh, I think you all know what I mean, and maybe I think I know it a little too well, but you know what I mean. Have fun, have fun, don't embarrass yourself. Uh, <laughs> so, just, so don't be afraid to let your sense of humor shine through. Don't be afraid to have a little fun as a leader. It can come through in meetings, you can tell jokes, all that stuff, it's, it's fun. And it actually makes your leadership skills and your leadership style more effective in the long run. So there you have it, the seven deadly sins of leadership. Um, now that you know what not to do, go be the best leader you can be. And don't forget, have some fun along the way, please, for me. Um, a happy team is a productive team. Uh, let me know if, if you found these helpful and if you put these practices into, into practice. Allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> no, but definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, shoot me a line. Same, like, comment, subscribe if you like this video. Um, thumbs up and subscribe, and then you'll get these directly to your device. Um, yeah, hopefully you found these helpful. And we will see you next time.